Thank you very much, Annie, and welcome, everyone. Here's your agenda for today. We're going to take you on a trip through three topics, and if we have time, a bonus topic. Those three topics are your 10 matching system. How does it get set up and how does it work? And we'll talk through uh, receiving a notice from the IRS that you have a problem with tax ID numbers and names, either mismatches or missing tens. That's a CP2100, which can trigger some B notices. Maybe the terminology is somewhat familiar to you. Maybe you've never heard it before, um, but you'll get familiar today. And the third topic is addressing a notice of proposed penalty and trying to successfully abate that penalty. It's a challenge, but the more you work with the areas that we describe leading up to that, and the more familiar you are with the setup of the W-9 system in your uh, uh, processes, and the more familiar you are with the withholding requirements, then the more likely you will succeed in obtaining a waiver. So that's kind of anticlimactic, we hope, when we get to that point. Bonus, if we get a chance, we'll talk about personal liability exposure. I may have your attention at that point. That wasn't part of the uh, promised curriculum, but we'll talk about it anyway. It is important, and we have a bulletin that uh, you can pull down from the IRS to learn more about it, and I have some editorial comment that goes with it to mitigate or minimize. Understand your risk, but know that it's relatively minimal. Let's get into our topics. Here's our first topic, registering for and using the 10 matching system. Okay, so the 10 matching system, it's a free, interactive, or bulk file system. It's offered by the IRS. It's hosted on their website. It's used by you on, again, a voluntary basis to verify names and tax ID numbers provided to you on Forms W-9. Now, the way the 2108 reads it says that you are only supposed to 10 match for the following 1099s, the INT, the B, the DIV, the OID, the PATRK, and MISC. Truth, I doubt seriously the IRS can tell whether you are attempting to match W-9 names and 10s for some other purpose. And another footnote, we have learned that some of our clients have successfully matched individual tax ID numbers, which were not intended to be matchable in this system. So it may have broader application than is described in the Pub 2108A. How does it work? Well, you receive your W-9 from the payee. You sign on to the e-services page of the IRS website. You submit the W-9 name and 10. You receive a response, print it, if it doesn't uh, match and you get a bad code, uh, then you need to take corrective action. I'll show you the codes in just a few minutes. If it does match, then you're going to file the 10 match response with the W-9, and at that point, you're ready to set up your payee for payment. Registering to use the system got more difficult once that two-step verification process came into play in October of 17. Now, it was supposed to come into play in October of 16, so they're a year behind. But you log into the registration page of the e-services section of the IRS website, and there's a URL that takes you directly there, but it's very easy to get to it. You go to irs.gov. In the search box in the top right corner, you type in e-services, and that will take you where you need to go. So all you need to know is irs.gov and e-services. So you're going to be reading some instructions and some options. We're going to go through the screenshots to help you find your way through this. You're going to want the PDF of the slides beside you when you go through this registration process. It'll make it a little easier for you. So once I was registered, and you too, you'll be permitted to log into the system and input names and TINs and compare to the database. Uh, there are three databases, two with the IRS, one with the Social Security Administration. This is an interactive or a bulk upload system. There's two methods. That's why there were two big boxes on a previous slide. You'll see it again in just a moment. When you're in the interactive session, you have an allowance for up to 25 name number combos per session. Um, the name number combos, there are a couple things you need to be aware of. I'm going to show you a screenshot of this page. 
But the main thing I want to warn you about is never, ever, ever attempt to match the same name and number. So when do we move to part two, this is the concern. If you're not using the 10 matching system, you are more likely to receive a CP2100 letter. The pub number for this topic is pub1281. And pub1281 is designed for you to understand the problems that you will face when you have a missing tax ID number or a bad tax ID number. So this pub1281 talks you through what will happen? You will receive a letter from the IRS, which is numbered CP2100 or 2100A for smaller taxpayers. And I don't know the breakpoint for smaller taxpayers. And these notices will tell you that you have a clock that you must perform within, and in other words, a deadline, and what specifically you must do. And it's a bit complicated. So that's the B notice round. Comparison of the payee listings to your records. Let's break it down. Compare the listing from the IRS. Okay, that was slide 66. Okay, compare the listing with the IRS to your listings. You're looking at your databases trying to determine whether you have the same information in your system as made it to the 1099s and made it back to you from the IRS. If the information matches, then work down toward the W-9 and see if the W-9 information was typed into your system exactly as it is on the W-9. If the information disagrees, fix your records. If the information agrees all the way back to the W-9, then you have a problem with what the payee submitted, and now you're going to be into the B-notice world. If you use the 10 matching system, it is entirely possible you will never come to this stage again because if you use it consistently and as a matter of standard practice to set up all payees in your system, you would never put someone in your system without a legitimate tax ID number. So the only other mistake you could make is not sending a 1099 when you were supposed to. You get this notice and it tells you that the penalty is $260 per form. And by the way, if you don't send it to the government, that's $260. If you don't send it to the payee, that's another $260. You're going to see this in a table in just a moment. These are the reasons why the penalty can be assessed. Missing incorrect 10, filed untimely, using incorrect media, incorrect format, or any combination. The penalty can be reduced to $50 if you fix the problem within 30 days of the due date, $100 if you fix the problem by August 1st. So here's your penalty chart. It's a couple slides on down, slide 91. And in 2016, I've got the penalties, and actually uh, I think the failure to file electronically when required went to 270 in 2017. Uh, the only thing that's been changing since then is the caps on the penalties in the right-hand box. All of those move with a CPI indexer 